Welcome everyone. Today I am interviewing my friend Megan. She is in med school to be a doctor, right? <laughs> That's right. Hopefully one day. <laughs> and so there are many different streams of medicine. What are the streams that you're in that you want to go into? Yeah, so um, medical school works. You do four years of general medical school, which everyone does. Um, and then at the end of it, which is uh, the year that I'm in, you have to decide um, what you want to do after that. So there's various different streams. You can do family medicine, you can do surgical specialties, mm -hmm. you can do internal medicine. Um, so right around this time we actually apply and we interview to figure out which programs we'll go into. Okay, and so out of all of those different streams, which one do you want to go into? So that's the uh, infamous question right now. Okay. Um, so a lot of people have already decided. I'm still not entirely sure. I think what I want to do is family medicine uh, with a focus on women's health um, okay. and do some obstetrics, so delivering babies. Um, but I also applied to internal medicine, which is more of a hospital specialty. So you see people when they're admitted to the hospital. Okay. Yeah. What did you do in your undergrad? Um, so I went to McGill, like you. Yeah. <laughs> And I did, um, I did a few years in anatomy and cell biology, um, and I did a minor in social studies. Okay. Um, and yeah, that's what I did. But why, how did you decide to go into anatomy and cell biology? Like, why did you decide to go into that program? Was it because you knew you wanted to be a doctor? Or was it because it just interested you and then later you decided to become a doctor? So it was kind of a couple of different factors. So when I went to McGill, I just knew that what I kind of excelled at was science and I found biology really interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and so in first year science at McGill, which is like U0. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I can't even handle U0. Anyway, um, so you do all the general sciences and then in second year you decide kind of what you actually want to do. And to me at the time, anatomy and cell biology just seemed to make sense because what I found the most interesting was like human physiology. And I think at that point I was starting to think about medicine. Um, and I thought it would be applicable, but I also wanted to do some courses that were a little bit different, which is why I ended up doing a minor in, in, a, in social studies and medicine, actually. Okay, and so with anatomy and cell biology, like, other than going to med school, what other jobs can you get with that? Like, what does that lead into? Like, why would someone go into anatomy and cell biology other than just the interest of anatomy and cell biology? So actually, um, our other good friend, Melissa, okay. uh, did the same program. Um, and so a lot of people end up doing research in cell biology afterwards. So she's doing a PhD at Sick Kids. Um, but a lot of the classes that we took could lead you to a variety of different things. I think research is definitely one of them. Some people end up doing kind of pharmaceutical type things. Okay. Um, but I think it could lead you kind of down a lot of different paths. Um, it's certainly helpful for something that would be based um, on human physiology because we do so much anatomy mm -hmm. um, in the program, but I think they actually changed the structure of the program to um, have more anatomy than it used to. Okay, so. So you, you were in, for, in like first year of school, you decided you were gonna go into anatomy and cell biology. Yeah. And then when did you decide you wanted to go to med school? I think pro like probably definitively would be in second year because mm -hmm. I actually, uh, let, I did three years. So probably in second year, I had a pretty good idea that I wanted to do medical school. Okay. Um, and why was that? Like, why? Did you always want to be a doctor? Was there someone in your family that was a doctor? So actually, uh, I do have several people in my family that are physicians, so okay. I did have that kind of role model. Um, but what I found was the classes that I found the most interesting were somehow related to medicine. So it was actually really interesting because I had this intersection between kind of arts and sciences or sciences mm -hmm. and humanities because I was in these like hardcore anatomy classes all about human physiology and cell biology. And then I was actually taking these like anthropology, sociology classes about kind of more of the humanities aspect of medicine. Okay. And I loved that. So I really liked the physiology and that's what brought me into sciences in the beginning. Mm -hmm. But I felt like medicine was this beautiful um, combination of the two where you can mm -hmm. have the science, but you also have the relationships and the humanities aspect of it. Um, and that's what I really liked. And I didn't think that doing research would provide me with as much of that. Okay, and then so your perception, like what you wanted to get gain from medicine and the reality, like how different is it from like actually being in school yeah. and from what you thought you would 
experience? <laughs> it's a great question because I think it's 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 really interesting as a pre-medical student you know it can be really challenging to get into medical school and so a lot of the time our focus is just kind of on how you get there mm -hmm. and then you actually get there and you're like oh okay this is how this is gonna go um and i i would say the the thing for me is that i changed a lot throughout medical school and i think my perspective of things changed changed a lot during medical school when you get into the clinical aspects and you start kind of forming um, relationships with patients um and i think medical school I don't know if it was exactly what I expected, but I think that I've learned so much about myself as well as so much about the career um, throughout it. I definitely wouldn't change it, mm -hmm. um, but I think it definitely changed me as a person for sure. Okay. And in terms of like getting into medical school, did you do like internships or volunteer work while you were at university in McGill or like what other sort of extracurriculars did you have? Yeah, so um, I did a lot of different things at McGill, which was nice to kind of uh, try many different things. I did uh, throughout my high school and a little bit of my undergrad uh, work volunteer in the hospital in a couple different areas. Okay. Um, but I feel like that's not necessarily, like, I think sometimes people think like that's what you have to do to get mm -hmm. into medical school. I don't really think that's true. Uh, some of my most kind of influential volunteering roles. One of them was at Making Waves in Montreal. And what's that? Um, it's now called actually Swimability, okay. um, but it's basically a program, a uh, volunteer run program okay. uh, to teach swimming lessons to children with disabilities. Okay. Um, so children with disabilities are one of the highest risk groups for drowning and so that's where the founder had this idea and he actually went to McGill and started this okay. program in Montreal. Um, so I did a lot of work with that where you do one-on-one -on -one swimming lessons um, and it was absolutely great. I loved it. And so I actually continue to do that in Toronto. So would you say that something like that is of more value or it's just different? Or are you just saying because most people do the same volunteer work in a hospital? And so this was sort of something that set you apart. I think, I think the one thing is for, for kind of applying to medical or applying to anything, what people see and what people value is the passion that you have for something that you do. So if okay. you're passionate about volunteering in a hospital and you find something there that you really like, then that's fantastic. For me, I did like that, but I loved making waves and the, and the connections that I formed with the children I was able to teach over many years and the families. And so I think that's something that comes across in an interview. Okay. Um, and so I think for me, and I still love doing it. It's something I find really restorative. Like in the first two years of medical school when I had a more consistent schedule, I, I did it every Sunday morning and it's something, it was just like a beautiful change of pace uh, mm -hmm. from kind of the everyday aspects of medical school. Um, so I really like that. And you're a lifeguard too. You have a lifeguard background. Yeah, yeah. it was kind of a perfect opportunity for me because I, uh, in high school, I worked as a lifeguard and a swimming instructor. Yeah, okay. So I had some experience, but I didn't, it was a bit of a challenge for me because um, some of the children I worked with were nonverbal, so I really had to learn how uh, to communicate with them and mm -hmm. how to facilitate lessons uh, in a way that would help them to learn. So just cheers for our coffee. <laughs> Caffeine is my favorite addiction. <gasps> mm. So what are the interviews like? <laughs> okay. That's my question. Yeah, so I'm actually maybe not the best person to ask about the all of the interviews because I um, interviewed after third year and I actually only interviewed in Toronto. Okay. Um, whereas most people, a lot of people in medical school will, will have had more kind of broad interviews. Okay. Um, and there's very, there's many different formats. Um, so there's, the one that they do at Toronto is what they call a modified personal interview. Okay. So there's kind of a spectrum. I guess we can start with the personal interview. That's the one that probably everyone's familiar, familiar with. Like, yeah. I'm sure you had that for job interviews and yeah. like that, where it's just a panel of people that are chatting with you. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the medical schools still do that. Okay. And then there's kind of this, uh, the opposite end is probably the MMI, which is the multiple mini interviews. Okay. And that's something that uh, I think was pioneered at McMaster, but essentially it's a bunch of stations, mm -hmm. like where it's about 10 minutes or something like that at each one. Okay. And you get a scenario. It could be anything. It could be ethics. It could be that you're with an actor playing out a clinical scenario. Okay. It could be like how you solve a problem. Sometimes there's actually more than one student in each Station. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you're like debating each other, or just like kind of wild different things. Um, and then the one that U of T does is kind of in the middle. It's called a modified personal interview. Okay. And the year that I interviewed was the first year they did it. But essentially how it works is it's similar to the panel interview, but instead of having several people and one candidate, mm -hmm. they separate it into 
station, so you have four stations with one person. Okay. But it's kind of just chatting about different things. Like, they all had themes to each station, but I, I really liked it because it felt more personal than when you're sitting kind of with a panel, you're able to really connect with that person. Yeah, that's true. So what is the best advice you've ever gotten? What is the best? <laughs> so actually, I think the best advice that I got in my clerkship year, so that's kind of our clinical year, um, was by example from my preceptors. And there was two things. What's um, a preceptor? So it's it's basically like the doctor that you're working with. Ah, okay. So you're the doctor that you're working under. Okay. Kind of thing. Um, so there's two things, I think. And both of them kind of relate to this piece of vulnerability because often in times we see in in general culture we see physicians as these kind of perfect creatures okay, they yeah, don't yeah. make mistakes that kind of thing mm -hmm. um and one of them was one of my preceptors who who actively talked to me about mistakes that they had made mm -hmm. um and they made it okay they made it a culture that it was okay to discuss those things so if i had a question or i had made a mistake i was able to kind of admit that to them and learn and learn from it and i think that's a huge piece because a lot of the time there's this shame in medicine, like, you know, we don't make mistakes and yeah, that's yeah. just not real. That's yeah. not realistic. Yeah. Um, and so I think that was one big thing. And the other thing was that I learned was that you genuinely have to be yourself. And if you're feeling emotions, show those, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Patients actually, I think there's sometimes a notion in medicine that you have to be this like stoic creature that mm -hmm. can support everyone else. But you see a lot of difficult things and patients actually, I find appreciate it when you show that emotion. Like I've actually cried with patients before that I knew very well and, and something bad has happened. Um, and so I think that's one of the biggest things that I've learned mm -hmm. uh, in my clinical experience. What is the worst advice you've ever gotten? The worst advice that I've ever gotten. I think in medicine there's this thing that you feel, or like, and I think it's probably in a lot of professions, like I don't think it's just medicine, <clears throat> that you can't take, like that it's weak to take into consideration like your life outside of medicine. Yeah. And I think that's awful advice. In with residency, people are like, well, you know, choose the best program. Mm -hmm. Even if it means you're moving like halfway across the country from your family, your friends, and your partner. Like that's just what you do because it's the best program. Um, and I just think that's genuinely kind of bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I can swear on you. That's fine. <laughs> um, but basically, like, you're not going to be happy as a physician if you're not happy as a person as well. Um, and so I, I just, I genuinely don't like the view that, that it's weak to consider things that are outside of just, like, what is objectively the best program. Because I think the best program for you is the best program for you as a person mm -hmm. and as a professional. That's, I actually went through the same thing. I was making all of the decisions based on my professional life. Yeah. When in reality, it's like, okay, you can have professional success, but, like, everything is a balance. Like, exactly. it has to be both. Yeah. So. And you're not going to be, like, you're genuinely, you're not going to be happy. I just think there has, yeah, like you said, like, there has to be a balance. I think that's really good though. Thank you, Megan, so <laughs> much you, for um, being my first medical student. Thank you so much. If you have any questions about medicine, you can leave them in the comments below and I will get Megan to answer them. And if you like this video, please like it. And if you, <laughs> and if you want to see more from Women in STEM, then please subscribe.